could see on there. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. See, it's doing, it's, it's, something's changed. Something's, well, you know, that Facebook changes <sighs> all the time. Good well, morning. we're going to start over again. Welcome to home version, outdoor version. Yes. Of the, of the Divine, Divine Fellowship. Fellowship. Jan's actually seeing, checking to see if everything seems to be working because everything's, oh, there we have one. Oh, yay. Okay, so it's working So we're now. good. All right. Well, what, it wasn't working before? Yeah. Hmm. I don't hmm. know. That's just weird. Strange. So. Hmm. Well, I still think you might want to get a hold of Beth. Well, no more are coming on now. Okay, so we're good. Uh, I don't we're know good. what was going on before. Sorry. Everybody was sleeping. Uh, we started over. Yeah, everything's working now. Uh, okay. we, we started over because it didn't look like everything was working right for some reason. Oh. Anyway, happy Memorial Day. Yes. Had a nice trip to Montana. Um, saw my sister. She lives on dirt roads and it rained all the way there. So miles of dirt road, m muddy. Dirt. Oh, my God. The, the mud on the car was like this thick. Yeah. Maybe. M might be an exaggeration. Maybe a little but, less than that. But it was It was nice fun. Uh, there was no phone at all. Couldn't get any messages unless we went to town. Get, they get no cell, com cell so, connection at all. So it was like we were off in the wilderness. <laughs> well, we were. <laughs> we kind of were. We kind of yeah, were. Yeah, we kind of were. So, oh, no, I've lost track. Let's see. Where am I on this thing? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, a little romper, uh, toddler, actually it's a toddler t-shirt. Warning, I'm two. No, no. There's one in pink and there's one in blue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yep, yep. Uh, and t-shirts and sweatshirts. Uh, sometimes it takes me all day to get nothing done. Isn't that the truth? I know. That's the truth. I know. Um, I don't trip, I do random gravity checks. Is that what that is? Yes. Hold on, let me overthink this. I mean, I may need that. I may need that. I'm not sure. You and me both. Yeah. Uh, my wife says I only have two faults. I don't listen and something else. <laughs> and then Silly. mom likes me best. So, of course she does. Of course. Of course. We do have a couple of patron saints by the name of George Carlin and John Lennon. Can you hear us okay? Phil's talking real soft. I am. Yeah. Don't know. So, hopefully. Speak up. Know. Okay. Okay. I think uh, it, we're used to s sitting here and being very quiet because well, we, we don't are. want to disturb the neighbors. Yeah. So, so it's a little challenging to be loud. Enough. Loud. Yeah. We can move this closer. Scooch in. Yeah. You can scooch in. We could in. do that too. We could do that too. I don't want to scooch my okay. fingers on you. I'm kind of creeping over here a little bit. So You're creeping. Yeah, You're, don't be a creep. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> anyway. Um, anyway. Mm -hmm. John said, I, a, a dream you dream alone is only a dream. A dream you dream together is reality. Yep. It is indeed. Bring and, it on. And George, if the cops didn't see it, I didn't do it. <sighs> George. Yes, George. We okay. love George. I love George. We love him. He's looking this tree behind me. You probably can't see it from here. Um, this one is the Don Redwood. That's a blue spruce, and then there's one right next to that is is um, a tulip tree, and it has blooms on it. But it's about forty feet high. Yeah, so. the blooms are low at a distance. Yes, I um, thought I could see one. Some of you may know this. Um, the unpopped kernels in a bowl of popcorn are called. Do you know? See, I thought you would know. Old maids. Oh my God! See, told you. She knows. Old maids. Why? What is that all about? Oh, you don't want to know. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, things can I'll make tell you go. You hmm. Later. Hmm. Hmm. Education makes a people easy to lead, but difficult to drive. Easy to govern, but impossible to slave. Enslave. Hmm. Hmm. Get educated. Yep. Genius means little more than the faculty of perceiving in an unhabitual way. I like that. Yeah. Executive ability is deciding quickly and getting somebody else to do the work. <laughs> True. So, um, yeah. Uh, you can't uh, you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. And I mean that is you know it it's an old adage, but it's it's true. And I, and I do like it. Yeah, and so. it's been overused, I think. Well, probably. Probably. Um, the most I can do for my friend is simply 
to be his friend. True. Henry Thoreau. So. And the last two of stupid criminals. Stupid criminals. Um, when a man attempted to siphon gasoline from a motorhome parked on a street, um, he got much more than he bargained for. Police arrived at the scene to find an ill man curled up next to the motorhome near the spilled sewage. A police spokesman said the man admitted to trying to steal gasoline and plugged his hose into the motorhome sewage tank by mistake. The owner of the vehicle declined to press charges, saying it was the best la laugh he'd ever had. <laughs> Ew. Yep. Oh, oh, I know, oh. I know, I know. Uh, Deanna, this was uh, somewhere else. I try and, I, you know, I can, they've got cities, but I don't want to use them. There's no reason to. A crime column reported a man walked into a Burger King um, somewhere. Flash at 7.50 a.m. Flashed a gun and demanded cash. The clerk turned him down because he said he couldn't open the cash register without a food order. When the man ordered onion rings, the clerk said they weren't available for breakfast. The man, frustrated, walked away. Ha ha. And two men tried to pull the front of a cash machine off by running a chain around the machine to the bumper of their uh, pickup truck. Instead of pulling the front panel off the machine, though, they pulled the bumper off their truck. Some of you may know where this one's going. Scared, they left the scene and drove home with the chain still attached to the machine with their bumper still attached to the chain, with their vehicle's license plate still attached to the bumper. <laughs> yes. There you go. There you go. Crime doesn't pay. I it know. I know. Pay. And Memorial Day. I have written something up. I'm going to read it um, just because I, it, I, I'm not as eloquent as what I got written down. Um, I will try to read my handwriting. This is not all my words. Um, this is a little bit of this and a little bit of that that I, hmm. I like. So um, I'm going to do this, and hopefully I can get through it. So, um, for Memorial Day. Oh, I've got one in my pocket. So, uh, in Memorial Day, I think a lot of people have forgotten what Memorial Day is really about. I mean, it's not about a picnic or, you know, a family get-together or something, although that's certainly... Uh, fun things to do on Memorial Day, but it's a time to remember. It's a time to remember the people that have passed and the people that have served, um, but mostly people that have passed and, and served their country by passing. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to kind of read this. Uh, draftees uh, in the Civil War, we had, and, and we've had draftees all along too. I mean, I almost was. I ended up joining, but it's because probably one reason because I was going to get drafted. So I figured I'd have more of a choice that way. So. Draftees in the Civil, we had draftees in the Civil War, both World Wars, Korea, and Vietnam. Uh, most uh, fight, fighting, bleeding, and dying were done by those who chose to wear the uniform. Uh, there have always, there have always been so many willing to fight and die to ensure the rest of us can live in freedom, peace, and prosperity. The nobility of their sacrifice, regardless of the war or terms of service deserves our prayerful thanks. If not only, it not only affirms who they were, it is a validation of who we are, a nation, a nation worth fighting for. Man, there's many organizations that you can volunteer, a lot of veterans organizations uh, that you can spend your time with. You know, if you're wondering who or what to do, I mean, what better than to serve uh, veterans that have that have had issues, need help, and a lot of vets do need help now. Um, if you're interested in building up America, rather than tearing it down, and each and tearing it and each other down, here is one worthy way to make a difference. Ta-da! Serve those who served. Yeah. Yeah. The heart of a servant. It's really, um, Phil and I have been talking about this a lot lately. We haven't discussed it to discuss with you today, but it's it's a rare thing, you know, to have that heart of service. Most people want to do it again. Um, but there's a lot in our group that have yeah. a heart of service. Yeah. So we honor you for that. So should we have a moment of silence for those? Yes, we should. And thank you for all the service, because we have a lot of former service people uh, in our congregation. I was in the Air Force, um, but you know, we have lots of Army 
um, Navy, Marines, a lot of, co you know, Coast Guard, uh, National Guard, a um, little bit of everything. A so. little bit of everything. Well, it's kind of like the rest of the church. We're a little bit of everything. Oh, and uh, uh, mer uh, not Merchant Marines, but um, I did say Coast Guard. Did you? Yeah, I did. Okay. Didn't I? I have no if idea. If I didn't, I said it again. <laughs> Coast Guard. And Coast Guard is always again. Coast Guard is always forgotten. I mean, <laughs> it's a service. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> so. so we'll just sit here for just a moment and listen to the little birdies sing and be in that place of honor. Wonderful. I hope you can, everybody can hear the birds singing and everything. I'm and that other weird sound is the um, guinea hen. Guinea hen from next door. They, they <laughs> kind of rescue all kinds of weird creatures and have a little guinea hen that makes is, noise. Makes noise. Weird noise. So, okay. Anyway. All right. Cool. That's all you got. That's what you That's got. That's it. Very good. Okay. I don't have a watch. Do you? Do we? I brought your phone out. Oh, okay. I'm gonna put that near my so I can see. Would hate to go over time. <laughs> I missed you. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the Christopher service that, was, uh, that uh, Beth so kindly put together for us. It was lovely. Um, I watched it. I thought it was wonderful. <clears throat> when we got service, I could watch it. So I'd like to start today with a prayer for strength. <clears throat> and this comes from our little prayers and gratitudes book. If you want a free copy, uh, go to thedivinefellowship.com and you can acquire that, um, that free book, the PDF of that book. Okay, so this is a prayer for strength. Loving spirit of light, I cannot do this by myself. I feel like I will fail. I have before. I fear I will again. Grant me strength, strength of will that leads to willingness. Strength of character that leads to truth. Strength of faith that leads to grace. Strength of trust that leads to courage. Strength of spirit that leads to joy. Pour your strength into me. Show me the way that will work for me. Guide my steps towards courage. Allow your courage to take hold within my heart and strengthen me even more. Allow your courage, oh, uh, walk with me. I am strong when we walk together. Thank you. In the name of the Ascended One, Jesus. Amen. And there's a gratitude that goes with this. I'm delighted that I sent spirit and find courage, encouragement and strength in divine presence. And that totally is perfect. I mean, I have been reading uh, prayers one at a time. Just turn the page and read the next prayer. And this totally fits in with what we're going to do today. <clears throat> I wanted to share with you again a little bit more about, sorry, I keep coming in and out of the screen there. Um, there's just not a lot of room on this little outdoor table. <clears throat> Pardon me. I wanted to chat with you a little bit more about this uh, Council of Discernment that I shared with you before we went on vacation. And we're going to just look at a piece of that Council of Discernment, a piece of that process. There's three parts to the process, seal, heal, and bless. We're going to look at seal today, and we're going to look at what all that involves, because that's big, that's huge. While we were gone, I used this Council of Discernment several times uh, over situations that had come up. Oh my gosh, powerful stuff. And when I shared it the, the first time, a couple weeks ago, we were just talking about um, relationships, bringing another person in, or another person's energy in, and... and uh, applying the Council of Discernment about a disagreement or something. You can do it for anything, and I've been using it for all kinds of stuff. <coughs> anything that I think I need help with, I have been bringing it to the Council of Discernment. So let's do that today. I want you to think about something you could use help with. Um, my notes are just a mess. I wish you could see these. <laughs> I just... It's just a mess. So I probably won't be able to read all of this. Can you see all the scribbles and all that jazz? So I'll do my best <clears throat> to share with you what I've got. 
But bring to your mind an issue that you'd like to have resolved or you'd like to have help with. What's troubling you? What's on your heart right now? For a lot of us, it could be <coughs> as she cough, coughs her lungs up. <coughs> it could be health issues. <coughs> Maybe it's a better job or a different job. Um, maybe it's uh, overcoming attitude or fear or, or uh, the uncertainty. There's a lot of that. Maybe, maybe it is a specific relationship issue. Or maybe it's just wanting to know your next step. What is on your heart right now? What is weighing, weighing you down right now? And that's what we're going to take into this Council of Discernment. So have you got something? Have you picked something out? I hope you have, because this will be far more powerful if you if you uh, have something that you're going to consider. So I'm going to give you another minute to think about that, because it's so important. <coughs> In the meantime, I want you to know that I took something into the Council of Discernment, and I had no idea. Uh, well, let me just... Okay, so the issue, <laughs> the issue was... Um, something came up that I didn't agree with and so I felt like I needed to confront somebody about something well I hate that I just hate it and so I took that thought of I have to go confront this person about something I took that to the, the Council of Discernment and did the process I want to share with you and sealed that in and then uh, walked away <clears throat> Later, it came to my attention something I'd never considered, ever considered. And it was so powerful. It was so easy. And it was wonderful. So this Council of Discernment can bring you insights and information that you haven't even thought of yet. Isn't that wonderful? Brings new insights, new awareness, and new opportunities uh, for a different situation. Took it into the Council of Discernment. And then I was looking for something uh, and trying to find something, and I found something that I had totally forgotten about. I had done a CD years ago <clears throat> called Into the Light. I found the manuscript for that, and I thought, did I do that? So I contacted the person that did music for that. I said, did we ever finish that? And she said, oh, yeah, remember we did that in my basement? I'm like, oh, yeah. I can't find the master copy for that. So um, I'm looking to see if she's got an extra copy or, or whatever. I may have to do that one again. But I found something that I found extremely intriguing and interesting. And it's this beautiful CD about helping people cross over. Helping us release things as we need to. Because it's really hard to cross over when you're cluttered with crud. And we're worried and stuff. And it, it occurred to me as I was reading that manuscript... That it doesn't matter if you're trying to cross over, you're just trying to live your daily life. It's really important to let go of stuff and let go of the things that burden us down and keep us from really living. So it's not <coughs> <coughs> it's not just a matter of letting go so you can pass, but letting go so you can live. So it was wonderful. So this council of discernment is beautiful. It's a beautiful process. So Let's take a look at that. So you have your issue. <clears throat> then you're in your mind's eye, in your awareness, you're going to call or create a council of discernment. And what this looks like then is this huge hall that is going to be filled with all of your support team. So for me, let me tell you what mine looks like, and then you can create yours according to your own visionary experience, or, or you can... Uh, decide what you want it to look like. For me, it's like a large uh, meeting room, but there's uh, rows of seating. And on the top row is angels. So it's all lit in the back. And <clears throat> that's just the whole top row. Now, a lot of people will call on um, a particular angel or whatever. <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with that. I want you to know that there's legions of angels to assist us. Legions of angels. Um, offhand, I can't remember how many in a legion, but it's like a thousand or something. There is a legion. So there's a bazillion of them. 
and you have access to the to the a legion of angels for for whatever situation you're under for each archangel there's legions of of other angels that follow that parameter so you don't even have to have the big guns if you want to call on them that's great but there's power here these angels exist in the presence of god so they're light they're from the light and they have experienced love and light that's their come from so that's what they're going to bring to us this understanding this wisdom this love this light that's their purpose and they help open doors you've heard of the divine intervention they help open doors for us <clears throat> so their presence is really really important then next i have a layer <laughs> actually it's like three or four rows of ancestors and that's really cool. I, I really enjoy uh, the ancestors. I haven't really thought about that. Uh, it might come from, we were taught that you die and you stay dead till the second coming. And so there's no access to ancestors. Um, so it's just been over the few, last few years that I've come to understand that we, we have that access to um, ancestors. And what's really cool is, I got to thinking about that and they have they're phenomenal i mean good grief look what they've endured to get here and i don't mean just the suffering uh but heck they didn't have indoor plumbing <laughs> and they, they did just fine um but there was a spirit about them that has been shown to me in this council of discernment that in the toughest of times they found joy in the most difficult of times, they had each other. They had this loving, lightheartedness. Now, I had a wonderful opportunity years ago to go see the Huaychul Indians in Mexico. This was way, it took us three hour bus drive and then an hour up the river to get to this real uh, Huaychul Indian village. And the energy there was amazing. They didn't have any indoor plumbing they didn't they had one building that the government had built for them that they didn't use because it was like why go inside it's hot <laughs> why, what do we need this building for <clears throat> but they had this spirit about them you know they would just sit around and, and there would be laughter and, and not mocking at one another or that that hostile stuff that's really not fun it was just this joyful spirit and then I've had a chance to <clears throat> do like a sweat lodge and some things with Native Americans. And again, there's this underlying spirit of joyfulness, this lightheartedness that sure life is challenging. Uh, they didn't have, they didn't have what we have as far as <clears throat> they didn't know what the weather was going to bring. They didn't have the weather app on their, on a phone. They just had to live with it. You know, if the hurricane came, they just dealt with it. And if a storm came, they just dealt with it. <clears throat> so they had a lot of resilience. They had a lot of strength and a lot of resilience. And they had a lot of this lightheartedness that went through everything. So you have a sense of that? Can you have a sense of that? And then below that are the guides. And the guides are these beings that have, may not be related to you, maybe, maybe not. <clears throat> but they have specialized qualities. They lived this life and maybe uh, you had a physician that was really wants to help people heal. And so you have this guide who is here to help you heal. Maybe there was another one who was really good at um, negotiating. So he wants you to be able to communicate well. Maybe there was a writer. Maybe there was another healer. Maybe there was a... Um, just a kind soul you have all kinds of guides that are here to assist you and assist you in having a great life and they want to you know they're here not because they are expected to oh you're gonna be assigned this one sorry here you go take that ticket no they they choose this they choose to do this and so they're here to help us in whatever way they can so they, they, your guides come with a, a level of uh, proficiency in a specific area. Now you may have a, a primary guide that is, is well versed in lots of different things, but you have access to all these other guides that are specific uh, in their talents and abilities. So they're all here. 
They're all here to hear what you have to say. They're here to hear your truth. Now, I don't think we're going to whine about stuff to uh, the angels and the ancestors and the guides. We're not going to whine to them. We're going to speak our truth. So whatever your situation is, let's find a way to say it in a truthful way that's not, oh, I don't like it, make it better. You know, that's not what they came here to do. They didn't come to fix your world. They came to help you have a good life. And the responsibility for that is on me, not on anybody else. It's not their job to make my world okay. It's my job to make my world okay. It's their job to help, their job to guide, their job to bring the best into my awareness so I can make the best choices. So one way you could say that, whatever your issue is, you could say, uh, I could be a better blessing to friends, family, my community, if I was blessed with a better job. Or you could say, um, my, my life or my family would be blessed with me uh, having better health. See how that is? That's different than, I don't feel good or this is bad. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have this illness. Oh gosh, man, you know, they get it. They don't have to whine. Boy, that's my first response. <laughs> whine. I don't want it. I don't like it. I don't want it to be this way. But speak it in a truth. Not a whine, but a truth. So maybe your your the world would be a uh, I could be a better blessing to the world if I knew my next step. I could be a better blessing to the world if uh, I could release this fear and uncertainty. I could be a better blessing to this world if this relationship with this other person could find a resolution or a healing or or um, compromise of some sort. See what I'm saying? So find your truth. Find your truth about that. Okay? And whatever that is, now speak it. And when you speak it into this council of discernment now, the angels hear you. Your ancestors hear you. And your guides hear you. Isn't it wonderful to be heard? How many times we say stuff to friends or family and, you know, deaf ears? They just... Yeah, and you know what was really hard for me, too, was... You know, they go off on their stuff. But you're really heard. They hear you. And they hear you with a resonance of truth. Truth understands truth. Truth understands truth. So the clearer we are, the more truthful we are with ourselves. And with this council of discernment, the clearer it's going to be. Everything is going to move more quickly for you. <clears throat> now, here's the hard part. And it's not really hard. <clears throat> let it go draw yourself out of the council of discernment they're there now this is not a locked place they can come and go as they please but you're going to seal in your truth you spoke your truth now you're going to seal it so <clears throat> that could look like um, the doors coming closed and locking uh, it could look like an angelic seal which to me is this big huge huge sphere <laughs> that that covers uh, so it's sacred you spoke a sacred truth <clears throat> and you will you get to allow that to just be okay so seal that council door however that looks like for you now what happens here is this they're gonna work on it they're on it they're already on it so when you find yourself worrying or stressing or distressing about that, say, mm, no, they're on it. I, I, I'm done with that. Because what's going to happen now is now you're going to wait for guidance and awareness that is going to lead you in the direction that is right for you. Make sense? You've spoken your truth. Now, now. Listen for the guidance. And that guidance can come in an aha. That guidance can come in uh, you're looking for something and something else shows up, like it happened for me. <clears throat> or you can, you can find that guidance in something that somebody says or a song that you hear 
or something a neighbor says, or there's all kinds of ways. You'd be nudged in a way, man, I hadn't thought about that in a long time, or have a new epiphany that you, you'd never thought of before. So your job is not to hold on to the worry or the concern about whatever that was that you left in the Council of Discernment. Your job now is to be open, is to awaken to the new insights and new information. Now, <clears throat> so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a process to help you with that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Something in my eye. <coughs> All right, so now <clears throat> what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to notice your second chakra, which is lower belly, and put your hands on your lower belly. Okay, this is your tribal energy. <clears throat> and we're going to activate all that ancestral energy. Within your DNA is carried with it the energy and the memory of success. The memory and the energy of abundance. The memory and the energy of cooperation. The, the memory and the energy of uh, vitality. All of that. See how quiet the birds got? That information is coming through right now. They were singing up a storm and now it's quiet. Because this information is coming to you now. This energetic DNA information is here for you. And with it is this lightheartedness. The lightheartedness that carries you through anything. They carried your ancestors through all kinds of trauma. Can you imagine everything that they've been through? And they still survived because you're here today. So they survived and more than survived, they thrived. And you have access to that. Can you have a sense of that in your lower belly? Again, the birds are really quiet. They want you to get this genetic DNA transfer from your from your ancestors to awaken within you courage, strength, power, discernment, understanding. Makes sense. I'm going to read to you just a little passage about discernment. <clears throat> okay, maybe two. Short and sweet. Uh, Philippians, first chapter, verse nine. And this I pray. This is. Uh, Paul writing, uh, that your love may abound still more in real knowledge and all discernment. There's a discernment in love. There's love in discernment. And your ancestors love you. I mean, good grief. How do you feel about your grandkids? Don't you just love them? Maybe when they're brats? <laughs> they love you and want to assist you. So with your hands on your lower belly, you can receive this genetic information, this genetic transfer of, of strength. Got it? Now, the other one I wanted to read you was, um, I'll read that in a minute. That's something else. <clears throat> so, let's see what's next on my list here to tell you. Okay. Okay. Um, So you're accessing courage, joy, faith, determination, strength, and gratitude, and more than anything else, this lightheartedness. Because this lightheartedness is going to carry you through a lot of stuff. But you're accessing this from, the, from your lower belly here, from this tribal uh, chakra, second chakra. Now, bring your hand up to your heart space. <clears throat> in your heart space, this is where you connect in with divine source. Certainly your mind is connected to divine source and your expanded awareness, but your heart is where your uh, intent s sits. Because when we make a choice with our heart, then our mind finds a way to make it happen. So it's here in your heart space. This is, this is not just your feelings. This is your, your awareness. This is, encompasses your, your expanded awareness. <clears throat> and encompasses the mind and that knowing. But we're focusing on the heart space here. And in this heart space, you're going to access your angelic realms, your angelic connections. 
all those angels that were there in your in your council of discernment. And I want to read to you from Hebrews, uh, the first chapter, verse 14. And talking about the angels, 13 to 14. Uh, he He's, well, you know, there's so much here. He's talking about Jesus and he's talking about um, how Jesus is more than the angels. Um, but he's, but just want to tell you about angels. We'll get back to that another day. For are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? Okay, this is us on the on the ascension path. They're ministering spirits sent out to render service. They're here to serve, not to be your slaves. Oh, go make my world okay. Snap my fingers if I earth raise the button. <laughs> but they're here to make our to help us in our own journey so that we can find the way that's divine intervention they open doors they uh, set up a chain of events it's like have you ever um, run into somebody you hadn't seen in years and they have a piece of information for you how do you think that happened your angels did that your angels did that your spirit guides guided you to that place and the angels brought your friends isn't that fun how that all works together? They work together as a team. It's a marvelous team. So we're accessing this heart of light in the heart space. So you have lightheartedness in this lower belly, and you have the heart of light up here. And this is that loving light because the angels live in the presence of God. God is the Father of light in whom there is no shifting or no shadow of turning. It's all light, all love, all the time. And that's their come from. So what do you think they're going to serve up for you? Love. Circumstances that create love. Circumstances that are going to bring you to a greater state of love. Now, bring both of your hands together in your solar plexus. And this is where your guides are going to meet you. This is where your guides are going to strengthen you. This is The solar plexus is, is our individuation where we become uniquely us. Now, you know, we talk about we are all one, yada, yada, yada. But each one of us is a significant piece of the cosmic jigsaw puzzle. You came here to do something that only you can do. And maybe what you can do, and maybe the thing that you came to do, is heal some genetic harm. Maybe there's abuse in your family life. But maybe not all the way back. You can tap into parts of your family history that were unharmed by abuse or unharmed by that sort of thing. Can you have a sense of that? Can you feel that? Now your guides here in your solar plexus, your guides are going to bring you to courage. This is where your seat of courage is, is in your solar plexus. And when we have that courage, then we can step forward in faith. In the heart space with this lower belly lightheartedness makes sense so it all comes together so this allows your guides access in order to give you guidance give you healing give you help and you have access to all of this with lightheartedness and a heart of light you are led into taking the next right step and you'll know the next right step to take. Does that make sense to you? Uh, your guides are going to show you how to do it. Show you how it's done. Let me see if there's anything I need you, I, you, I need you to know. So your, your guides are your guides are here to lead the way the angels are here to lead you into uh, peace service uh, integrity honor and your family is here to guide you into this uh, strengthening and encouragement and gratitude and joy make sense so I'm gonna have Phil come out and help us with uh, communion and then we'll do a bit of a guided meditation. A short one. 
I forgot the phone. Let me see if I can call him. Call him on the home phone. Where's my phone? Let me call him on his home phone. Oh, there he is. Would you bring the phone, honey? How's the kitchen phone? Close that. There's just so many details. <laughs> and I'll be glad when we get to go back to the church. We're hoping soon, we're hoping really, really soon, um, we'll have a board meeting to discuss it here in a bit and we'll uh, go from there. Looks like it's panning out. You know, I said at the beginning of the year, I was thinking we were thinking June oh, wrong way. ish, maybe July. So. I'm I'm thinking probably June. I mean, let's hope. I yeah, hope it, so. It looks pretty good so far. I hope so. Looking better. <clears throat> so communion. Uh, this is considered unleavened bread. This is um, symbolic. Pardon me. Symbolic of Jesus and His life, and the physical manifestation of divine love into the physical world. And so as we consume this, we take in that love and that light and those right actions and that spiritual wisdom. So will you join us in prayer, please? Loving spirit of light, as we move forward in our lives, help us to walk with faith. Help us to allow ourselves to be open to the guidance that you're sending our way. Guide us. Walk with us. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Go ahead. Oh, just a lot of glare. glare. <laughs> Probably need to move the umbrella just a tad. Maybe. You could do that. <clears throat> Communion. <laughs> Forgot what we were doing. Um, this is grape juice, and it's symbolic of the lifeblood of Jesus. He gave it all. He had the heart of a servant, mm -hmm. and he awakens within us the ability to live our lives with that heart of service, which is not about doing it for ourselves, but doing it for a greater good. So join us in prayer, if you would, please. Loving spirit of light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life, all of it. And as we drink in all of life, help us to... Find our way, help, help our guides and angels and ancestors to lead us so that we can navigate this life more fully, so that we may be filled with lightheartedness and a heart of light. These things we pray in the name of the Ascended One, Jesus. Amen. Amen. <coughs> okay. And Beth, thank you very much. <coughs> we always forget. <coughs> Normally, at service, we would be passing the basket now. But one of the fun things I, I have loved to do for all of these years, decades, is just to call somebody up at random from the audience. Um, it, it's usually about the time that people kind of go, like, oh, no, no, don't, don't, don't call, call on me. Don't call on me. <laughs> people are shy. And it is absolutely amazing, truly heartwarming, what people say. I mean, it's not what you would expect. It's no. just very, very deep. So we're always quite impressed. Yes. So. And truly, truly grateful. Because here's the thing. It's not about the contribution. Mm -hmm. It's about that open-heartedness. And when the basket is passed, if you don't have money to put in the basket, we're okay. That's not, that's not where we're about. We ask that you put a blessing on the basket. Because then those funds are, are transmitted out into the community and they're blessed. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's all about being a blessing. Blessing and being a blessing and being blessed and returned. In return. Uh, <clears throat> and it's not a dollar amount. It's, that has nothing to do with it. It's, a, it's that heart of service that um, connects us to, to all. We're all connected. And this heart of service allows us to be a blessing. I don't know, more to say about that, but it's it's profound to me how much the people at the Divine Fellowship get that. And yeah. they don't 
-hmm. They don't talk about, oh, you got to give because if you're not, you're not a good person. No, it has nothing to do with that. Yeah, Yagni. So it's about this heart of service and, and being the love that you are. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. And even my, even, I think even my sister, she was doing um, Amazon Smile. I think she was going to maybe even said she might change it to uh, our church instead. She well, how fun is that? Didn't quite realize that she could do you that. You could do that. So, yeah, so right. you can. Okay, so... <clears throat> no, I'll try to move the umbrella. All right. Without falling. Let's hmm. see what that looks like. Can you roll it? Let me have to put it up on here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That helped a little bit. Yeah. All right, so I'll do a guided meditation, and then I'll call you back unless you have something else you need to say. That's still pretty it's bright no on there. No. <laughs> Whatever. Because yeah. the step is so bright. What? Ever. Get out. <laughs> can I see the dog in there? I probably can't. She's... Nope, they can't. Not for yeah. now. Even with the chair gone. Nope. Even with the chair gone? Yeah, yeah. no. She sounded, well, you want to lift the screen up? People want to see the dog. That's what you want to see, right? That's what you came here for. There she is. There's my sweet little Lila. Isn't she cute? Well, as long as I got it, I'll go ahead and Oh, here's the rest of bit. our yard. Oh, well, part of it anyway. And the sound effects are... Those are those are no charge. Okay, we're almost out of time, Phil. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's gonna have a lunch. Sorry, you didn't need to see my thumb. <laughs> well, let's push it in. Okay, so let's do a guided meditation, shall we? <clears throat> and because of time, it's just gonna be a brief one. We spent a, a bit of time on that process of uh, awakening the solar plexus and the art of light and the uh, solar plexus of courage. <clears throat> All right, so let's take a deep breath in and just exhale. Another deep breath in and exhale. And one more deep breath in and exhale. And I'm going to adjust this. I apologize. Just a second, because that gets the glare off the screen, and I don't have to squint so bad. <clears throat> so let's just notice the garden. Notice where you are. I want you to notice where you're connected to the earth. If you're sitting with your feet up in a lounge chair, that's fine. Just notice that where you're you're. Bottom is attached, is touching the chair, and the chair is touching the ground. If you're sitting up and your feet are touching the ground, notice your feet that are touching the ground. This grounding energy is a gift from Divine Source, our sacred home, this Mother Earth. It wants to receive and as assist us and grant us structure. So I want you to be aware of the bottoms of your feet and there's portals at the bottoms of your feet, right in the very center of your feet. And if you open them with the eye, like the eye of a camera, they just open up just with your intent. And these are two way streets. Uh, they allow any clutter, frustration, stress to just drain out. It's like the water out of a bathtub. You, all you have to do is pull the plug and the, it just drains. You don't have to do anything. And it also allows you to draw up this strengthening energy from the earth. So allow yourself to pour out of yourself stuff that you don't want to carry with you anymore. Maybe it's worry or fear or anxiety. Maybe you're really stressed out about what we put through the ascension into the ascension, into the council of discernment. And as you let that go. You can just now let go of all the energetic charge that you were carrying in your body about that. Because we do. If I'm frustrated about something, I carry it in my shoulders, I carry it in my neck, I carry it in my head, I carry it in my low back, I carry it in my guts. We carry that stuff. 
But by being aware of this portal at the bottoms of our feet, we can just let it all drain away. Because it's not serving us. It's not serving us. So allow yourself to be served by the universe, by the, this planet, and now draw up into yourself the energetic structure of healing energy. And then as this process is going on, you'll release some stuff and draw more in. Release some stuff and draw more in. As that process is going, you may, you may even want to see that, that maybe you're draining out the back of this portal and up the front of the portal you're drawing in this beautiful uh, earth energy. Now bring your attention to the top of your head. There's a portal right there and it connects you to divine source. And there's gazillion little portals over our head that you can utilize to tap into. Connect in as best you can, whatever feels right to you. Maybe it's a particular um, color. Maybe it's a particular uh, texture. Who knows? Whatever feels right to you. And as you connect in, living light of love pours down into that shot, uh, open portal and floods your whole body, your whole being. This is that heart of light. This is where the light comes from. It's just light. It's just love. And you can receive that. Now, maybe you've had some trauma in your life or challenges in your life that have tried to teach you you're no good or tried to teach you you're not good enough or tried to teach you that you're a failure or tried to teach you that you, no matter what you do, it's not, not ever going to work. That's just hooey. That's just life experiences. And we are more than that. We are this light. And you can let that light come in and permeate your whole being. And realign you to this heart of light. Realign you to this living light of love that you really are. Bringing more and more of that light and let it touch your, your third eye, your discernment centers, your above, your, above your eyebrows and, and the back of your head. This is occipital lobes and your discernment centers. That's That whole concept shifts everything because we get programmed by lies. But we can get reprogrammed by love. And love changes everything. And as you become aware of that and draw that into your being, let it touch your eyes, let it touch your ears, your mouth, your throat, let it touch your heart. Really fill this heart space with this uh, heart of light. Let it fill your shoulders and your arms, your hands. My hands are already feeling more healthy, brighter. I can almost snap my fingers now. Let that energy flow through your whole torso. Let it touch every system, every organ, every organ, every tissue, every cell. And down into your DNA, awakening this ancient information, awakening your DNA so that patterns from the past that are supportive can be reactivated for you. Letting more and more of that living light of love flow into your legs, into your knees, into your calves into your ankles into your feet and then let it flow out your feet and let it let yourself just be a conduit of this light light pouring in from divine source through you into the earth and as you do you anchor this living light of love it becomes a presence here and there may be people near you that are struggling and they can tap into this by just being aware of it, and it will reach their awareness. All they have to do is pray, and they'll tap into this energy that you have anchored into the earth. What a beautiful service. Thank you for being the heart of service there. And now gently, gently, gently close the bottoms of your feet, and you're a vessel of light. More and more light filling your body, your physical form, and the aura that surrounds your body. So you're just full of light. Oftentimes in our aura, our aura can get cluttered with uh, other people's stuff. I mean, we're always interacting with people, even though there's a six foot rule, we have to keep six feet away from people. We still collect clutter, energetic clutter from our environment, from our world. And having this light beaming in and expanding out through our aura clears that all out. 
So it's really clear, it feels wonderful. And from this place of clarity, we're gonna take a little walk. And we're gonna take a walk into the garden. We're out in the garden now. Let's take a walk into uh, a cosmic garden, a spiritual garden, a garden that you're gonna create in your own mind's eye. As you walk into the garden, you're gonna notice that there's uh, plants that are in full bloom. There's plants that are budding and there's plants that are just barely even breaking through the ground. And then there's some plants that are already spent. And you're going to just notice that. And as you're walking through this garden, you'll notice the colors in this garden. Maybe there's some red flowers. Maybe there's some yellow flowers or blue flowers or pink flowers. And maybe there's shrubs that are green. Every one of those colors has a vibration that is sending energy into your being. If you're longing for healing, absorb the green energy. If you're longing for more strength, more power in your life, absorb the red energy. If you're wanting more joy, absorb the yellow energy. Whatever energy is here, absorb it all. You could have it all. It is your, your garden. And these things are blooming here in your presence for your benefit. Now allow yourself to find your way to a park bench in your garden. And across from the park bench, you're going to notice there's a fountain. And it's, it, instead of a fountain of water, it's a fountain of light. And perhaps it's a, a cherub and it's dancing and the water is spewing. Maybe it's a dolphin and spitting water. Or, or maybe it's just bowls of water that are spilling over. However you're imagining that is what is right for you and what will bless you greatly. As you notice this fountain of light, notice the light in your heart and notice that it is the same light, same sparkling bright light. And you'd like to have more of that light in your heart space. So allow yourself to open your hands and as you open your hands, the light from the fountain flows into your hands. And as you receive that, you can bring it into your heart space. And you feel your heart lightening even more, becoming more light, more bright. And you feel your, in your solar plexus that courage and that strength awakening, being even more courageous, more brave. And you feel your connection to your ancestors which brings you a lightheartedness a joyfulness and now look down next to you and on the park bench and there's a gift that's been left here just for you or maybe it's just a word or a thought or a feeling or maybe a symbolic object whatever is here receive that with deep gratitude and know that it has spiritual significance for you and now as you're hearing the birds chirp and if you, as you've received your gift, you have a feeling that you would like to leave something here as, a, as an expression of your gratitude. Perhaps it's a word or a thought or a feeling, or perhaps it's a symbolic object. Whatever you choose, leave that here and leave that now as this beautiful gift of gratitude. And now sensing around in the garden, noticing the fountain, feeling re rejuvenated and recharged, walking back past all the beautiful flowers, knowing you can come back here at any time. And maybe there's things that you'd like to do or say or be here in this garden to allow yourself freedom. Know that you have that opportunity and you can return at any time. Walking back through your garden, noticing the flowers, Noticing the colors, <clears throat> walking back into your body, back into the here and now, back into this time and space, taking a deep breath in and exhale, wiggle fingers, wiggle toes, and welcome back. Now, I did not have a specific um, suggestion for you as to what your, what your gift or, or what you gave or what you received might mean. So if you have any questions about that, you can type them in, send them to Phil. Uh, we don't really have time for us to discuss that online, 
So put that, uh, sit, type it in and I'll get back online here in a minute and I'll, um, I'll answer your questions if you have any. Just know that you probably already know what the symbolism is. You know, ask your guides to reveal that to you. Ask the angels to reveal that to you. Ask your ancestors to reveal that to you. And if you need a little help, just let me know. So, Mr. Phil, if you want to join me again, please. I'll see if... There he is. There weren't any so far. So far, yep. Alrighty. He's back. Mm -hmm. So let's do an energy circuit to complete our service. So we're still connected in, and I'd like you to now um, bring that connected connectedness into your heart space, this heart of light. See how light that is. Feel that light in your being. And now bring that to your left hand. I think it's your, this is probably left for you. And then across to your right hand and then back to your heart space. And what that does is that, that connects that circuit. And as that does, then the energy builds between your hands. And as that energy builds between your hands now, you have a choice. Life is all about choice. You have choice in all of it. And you can choose what to do with this light. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to send it to someone who could use it. Someone, can you hear the sheep next door? <laughs> Those little baby lambs. What are, the, what are they? Barley and oats? Oat, barley and oats. Barley and oats. The little teeny tiny one is barley, right? I don't know. I don't know. They're both tiny. They're both tiny. Anyway, so... <laughs> There, there may be someone in your circle of influence that could use healing or comfort or encouragement. And there's several in our group who are stage four cancer and they're just yeah. living life as best they can for now. So whether you want to send the energy to them or send energy to their loved ones who are, who are enjoying the best that they can at this point in time. Maybe there's someone in your family. Maybe there's someone in your, your close neighborhood circle of influence. So be mindful, send this energy out with this heart of service, the heart of light. Send it out, be a gift, be a blessing. Go hug a vet. <laughs> and release that. Bringing fresh energy in one hand to the other, back to the heart space, concluding, linking mm -hmm. in that circuit. Letting that energy build. And now this time, we're gonna take this amplified energy, this amplified living light, and we're going to bring it into our own heart so that we can have the heart of a servant. We can have the heart of service. And we can be a gift into our universe. May your life be a prayer. God bless. And hopefully we'll be uh, back online. Uh, we'll continue to do Facebook. We've just got to still figure out how to do that how exactly. Do we, I'm not really sure, but we're, hey, you know, good grief. We've figured a lot of stuff out over the last few months and we'll put in the council of discernment and it'll get this it'll be revealed to us the best way to do that so that should be hope hopefully that'll be happening soon soon in the meantime i love you god bless <laughs>